Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right. Markeith Morris is a Brooklyn net for one year. Um, just signed his deal. And, you know, I look at this as another uh, kind of forward piece that they're putting together in regards to a uh, similar body type that Royce O'Neal has, kind of an interchangeable piece. Player that's going to provide some toughness, some defensive intensity, some rebounding, some championship experience. And um, you just look at the Markeith Morris piece um, in terms of basketball as somebody who's just going to provide more further depth in their forward position. I like Keith. Obviously, like I said, Laker champion, you know what I mean? Somebody that I think, uh, you know, has proven himself to be a scorer over the years. Tough dude, him and his brother, talented players. I think at this point, he's a bit past his prime. Um, we're, we're at a place where I, I don't know that he's productive uh, anymore. Now, he was with the Lakers. Given He gave us a little something. You know what I mean? He was a nice player for us, nice piece. We won. Uh, but, you know, after that, at the end of the season, it was evident to me that there wasn't a whole lot left. Now, he went to, he ended up going to Miami. I didn't follow that situation. I know there was, wasn't a lot of playing time. And obviously, him signing up with the Nets, I'm sure he's going there to uh, also kind of play the back of the bench or, or sort of more so play more in the second half of the season in playoffs, I think. Um, but at the end of the day, I just say, you know, with the mistakes that the Brooklyn Nets have made in terms of bringing in veterans and having them not materialize into productive players, um, this is yet another one of those situations where I say this is in that vein, to be completely honest with you. Um, I like Keith, but, you know, it's just one of those situations where I would much rather, if I'm the Brooklyn Nets, uh, bring in a upside piece there. Somebody who can materialize into something that I can trade for a second round pick something that i can materialize that i can trade um or or develop into a piece that that works for my bench uh, my criticism of the nets is that they haven't necessarily wanted to develop talent and or, or utilize young players in such a way that allows them uh to find assets since they've mortgaged all of them away uh, it's one of the things i've suggested to the lakers over the last several years and they've done a fantastic job uh, in making <clears throat> in making that happen for themselves by uh, investing so much in their G League affiliate and making sure that they bring in the best scouts uh, and empowering them to, you know, do exactly what it is that they do. And as a result, we have a bunch of young talent in that area that we believe in, that we know we can materialize, develop, and furthermore trade for other assets. So even though we don't have our picks, we see a path to where we can get some value out of nowhere and that's what i believe the brooklyn nets don't have and so with 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 signings like this um this is one of those situations where i'd be like yeah i'd, I'd like to bring keith in. in 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 the grand scheme of things for the nets they're a win now team you expect that he's going to be a win now piece good to go but the problem is they do this too much they have too many of these type of pieces and not enough of the young guys that can come in and really do some give give them some youthful and athletic uh, defensive and offensive, of course, help. Uh, so as a result, their their stars end up having to do too much. The defenses end up having to crowd in or, or being able to crowd in on those stars, and they don't end up uh, having opportunities when Ben Simmons isn't there. Of course, we haven't seen Ben Simmons down there, but when he is down there, I imagine his responsibility is to guard some of these bigger and most talented players because of the lack of defensive wing talent that they have. So instead of you know, giving yourself more front court help, uh, you're only bringing in yet another over the hill kind of player that probably won't materialize into anything productive. So it's like that's a lost roster spot, respectfully. So yeah, I'd love for Keith to, to hear these words and, and make me eat them, but I also understand uh, that he's coming back from a very serious injury for which, you know, took place with the whole Joker thing. So you're looking at that as well and you're just saying, you know, like seriously. But what I'm curious about is to see how the media is going to narrate, narrate this signing. Are they going to say it's a good signing? Are they going to say it's a great signing? Are they going to kill it like I'm killing it? Because at the end of the day, it's not about Keith. It's about what are you doing with your roster spots when you don't have your picks? What do you do? You have anything at all that can materialize into anything? that can help you over the duration of the four years that, that you have KD down for contract. You obviously want to kick Kyrie out the door, right? You don't want to pay him his money. You want to force him to take shots and all this for what? 
So you can continue bringing them over the hill players that can't help them and then blame them for the team not being good enough. This is the problem. That's <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. Fluff. I'm sorry. I can't help but come back to this point because it speaks to what I'm saying. They brought in Keith because they're familiar with his name. This is how they operate. Brought in Blake Griffin because they're familiar with his name. LaMarcus Aldridge is familiar with his name. I remember him. I remember him. I remember him. That's how they operate. And it shows. <laughs> it literally shows. Give away a first round pick for Royce O'Neal. What? No. Paying Patty Mills crazy amounts after what we just saw? No. All of this is bad. <laughs> it's bad. Somebody has to say it, man. ESPN ain't. They're not. They're not going to say it. So, this is why KD wants Sean Marks out of there, man. It's because of stuff like this. And I'm going to bring up something. I'm going to tell the truth. This is the same problem I had with Mitch Kupchak back in the day. He used to bring us role players that weren't really any good. Put a lot of pressure on our stars. Our stars get hurt. Those role players suck. Our championship glory goes away. We needed better role players. A lot of the time, he would give them guys chances that could not play. Low key, we, are, we would have Hall of Famers at the top of our bench and then super scrubs at the bottom. I'm talking guys have talent level that weren't where it needed to be. And so this is what I see with Sean Marks in, in Brooklyn. It's the exact same thing I see. That's why it's such a pet peeve for me because they're like, yo, I've seen this movie before. I know what this is. <laughs> I know exactly what this is. And see, back then, they didn't have no G League. So you had to get it right. Or you had to give those guys chances. Or you had to bring in over the hill guys who couldn't do nothing for you no more. You don't have to do that no more. You don't have to do it in 2022. See, I knew it was a problem when they said that Brooklyn didn't want any picks and they started giving away picks for players like Royce. I knew it was a problem because it spoke to them not being on point with what everybody else is on, which is the youth movement. You see what everybody else is doing? They're trying to put themselves in position to have more youth, more free agents. Um, not free agents, excuse me, more draft picks, more all of that. They want to make sure that they're in for the future. That's why KD couldn't get moved in the first place, because people were not trying to give up future assets. That's why Utah's going crazy, because future assets hold so much value. Brooklyn doesn't want future assets. Why is this? Why is this? Do they know something the rest of us don't, or are they behind all of us? I'm telling you what I see. To the latter. And the media's not going to tell the truth. They're not. They're going to lie. They're going to say this team's great. It's a win now piece. Markeith Moore is going to come in and boost the team. And then he's not going to play well. Or he's going to get hurt, play like 30 games. And they're going to kill him for it. Or they're going to kill him. Oh, oh, that's what they do. They're, they're going to set up one or two of those guys to be Westbrookian. You already see it coming. If you don't see it coming, I'm telling you it's coming. They're setting the Brooklyn up to, Nets up for failure. obvious man and that's why i think Kyrie and katie should still get the hell out of there you should see it just like i see it. it is plain to see this is a narrative play they're setting this team up just like they did last year they weren't good enough last year didn't have enough defensive help didn't have enough front court help they were going to lean too much on non-defensive players and KD was coming back from injury to do everything how was that supposed to work now they're leaning on ben simmons who's coming back from back and brain back and brain back and brain, back and brain. They ain't played in a year. The last time we saw him, it was real concerns that we don't even have to bring up. Out of respect, but we know what they were. They were concerns. And now he's supposed to come back and be the third piece to a win-now team that must win the championship with players like Markeith Morris and Patty Mills. And man, if you don't stop. Because I ain't. I'm going to keep telling the people the truth. We got two picks. Because you know that's what my interest is about. Two picks, Brooklyn. That's why I'm telling the truth about your team. Otherwise, I wouldn't care. You get me off your, your coattail. All you got to do is take these two picks and give us the player that you know you should, that you ain't going to respect properly. And I won't say nothing about you but positive things. Everyone speaks positive about the Nets. BDL44, I thank you all for watching.